Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. This will be part three of Fruit. Now, in the second book of Kings, chapter 20, verse 7, we read the following. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took it and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And then in Isaiah 38, verse 21, For I, Isaiah had said, Let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster upon the boil, and he shall recover. Now, was it just a physical healing? Was there a spiritual aspect? I'm not really sure. Perhaps the fruit had a spiritual and a physical aspect. I don't know. But figs were the symbol of Judah, as opposed to grapes for Israel in general. And Judah was part of Israel, but not all of Israel was part of Judah, because there were 12 tribes. Judah was the tribe of the kings. They were one tribe. There was 11 others. The Levites, they were the tribe that God picked alone to be the priesthood. They were the ones to perform the sacrifices and work in the temple. But there's still 10 other tribes. Okay? It's just like there's 50 states and all everybody in the 50 states are Americans. Well, if they're American citizens. Everybody that's American citizens in the 50 states is an American. But not everybody from, uh, you know, not all Americans are Californians or Texans or Floridians or New Yorkers or, you know, Iowans. So, all right, in the book of Nahum, let's take a look. I'm sorry, uh, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 8, starting in verse 1. At that time, saith the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah, and the bones of his princes, and the bones of the priests, and the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. And they, shall, and they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of heaven. And when they talk about the host of heaven, they're talking about the angels. And all the host of heaven whom they have loved and whom they have served and after whom they have walked. So they, they serve the sun. You've heard of the, the sun god. Uh, the, the witches... They have a moon god, some of them, not all of them. And then the, the host of heaven, the fallen angels. And they shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all, and all the host of heaven, whom they have loved and whom they have served and whom they have walked and whom they have sought and whom they have worshipped. They shall not be gathered nor be buried they shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. If you don't know what dung is, it's uh, number two from an animal or humans. And death, death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all all the places whither I have driven them, saith the Lord of hosts. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? Perpetual means forever. Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. Return to the Lord, that is. 
I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rusheth into the battle. Yea, the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How do ye say we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The scribes were the copyists of the law. They didn't have printing presses back then, so they had to copy the Bible on animal skins. The pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected, rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom is in them. Therefore will I give their wives unto others and their fields to them that shall inherit them. And every one from the least, even unto the greatest, is given to covetousness from the prophet, even unto the priest. Every one dealeth falsely. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people, slightly saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. See, the prophets were lying back then. I remember when I was studying a little bit with a, a guy I grew up with in um, high school. And he joined the Jehovah's Witnesses, and he was trying to get me involved. Um, I did a little bit of studying with him, because I kind of, I sort of kind of believed back then. And uh, he kept telling me, yeah, 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 the the watchtower tells us, yeah, the, the world's going to end in 1975. Um, the world's going to end. Jesus is going to return, and it's all, you know, if you're not a member of the watchtower, you're going to be destroyed. Well, guess what? 1976 came and gone, and we're still here. You know, Jesus didn't even know when he was returning, so how is it that the Watchtower Society knew something that Jesus didn't? Well, they don't. They didn't know anything. So, what can I tell you? Pro false prophets have been around for a lot longer than the Watchtower saying peace peace when there is no peace were they ashamed when they had committed abomination nay they were not at all ashamed neither could they blush ah we just read that not too long ago didn't we what people can blush people from the congo no American Indians? No. The people that blush are the people that have carried the Bible around the world. The people that printed the Bibles. The people that built the churches. The descendants of those in Europe. They were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall in the time of their visitation, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. I will surely consume them, saith the Lord. Listen carefully. There shall be no grapes on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree. Grapes are Israel, figs are Judah. Of course, this could be have a spiritual application as well as a physical application. You know, you're, you're not going to have anything to eat physically for your physical body or spiritually for your spiritual body, right? There shall be no grapes on the vine, nor figs on the fig tree, and the leaf shall fade. And the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves and let us enter into the defense city and let us be silent there. For the Lord our God hath put us to silence and given us water of gall 
to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. Didn't they give Jesus gall and vinegar, something bitter to drink on the when he was on the cross? Oh yeah. All right, in the 69th uh, chapter of Psalms, verse 21, we read, They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. And then in Matthew 27 and verse 34, They gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. So, you know, what I find interesting is the Lord was going to give us something bitter to drink, and Christ tasted of it. He was taking our punishment on the cross for us. He tasted the bitter drink for us. All right, turn to Mara, the book of Mark, chapter 10 and verse 35. You know, I could do an entire Bible study on the cup. I was just looking at that. All right, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him, Jesus, and came unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. In other words, hey, uh, we got a favor to ask of you. We want you to, you know, do this for us. And he said unto them, what would ye that I should do for you? In other words, uh, what do you want? They said unto him, grant unto us that we may sit one on the right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. But Jesus say, said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. They said, Oh yeah, oh yeah, you better believe it. Yep, we can do that. And Jesus said unto them, Oh, ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism baptism that I am baptized with, with all shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them to whom, for whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be much displeased with James and John. See, they were thinking, oh yeah, we're going to share the cup, the cup of rulership. And we're going to sit on your right hand and on your left when you're on your throne of glory. That's what they're thinking of. Jesus is like, oh yeah, you want to drink of the cup that I'm going to be drinking of? See, they're thinking, John and James were thinking of one thing, and Jesus knows it's another. It's going to be the vinegar and the gall. You see... With the exception of Judas Iscariot, who committed suicide, and John the Revelator, who wrote the book of Revelation, ten of the twelve apostles died for their faith. Paul died for his faith. Oh yeah, they, they drank at the same cup, all right, but it was the cup, cup of vinegar and gall. So, all right, let's go back to Jeremiah. Verse 14, chapter 8. Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves and let us enter into the defensive city and let us be silent there. For the Lord our God hath put us to silence and given us water of gall to drink because we have sinned against the Lord. We looked for peace, but no good came. And for a time of health, and behold, trouble. 
The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of the neighing of his strong ones, for they are come and have devoured the land and all that is in it, the city and those that dwell therein. For behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices, cockatrices among you, which shall not be charmed, and they shall bite you, saith the Lord. A cockatrice is a, is a type of poisonous snake. You know, uh, just like the unicorn, uh, uh, unicornus rhinoceros is a, a black Asian rhino with one horn, uni, uni means one. You've heard of a unicycle, one wheel. Just like they took a, a, uh, a one-horned rhino and turned it into a, a horse with a horn coming out of its forehead. So they try to tell you that's what a cockatrice is. Cockatrice is just a serp. It's a poisonous snake. So, and you got to realize there's uh, different types of poisonous snakes. You know, you've got uh, rattlesnakes, which their bite, their their venom will dissolve muscle tissue. And then you've got cobras that inject a venom that is a what's called a neurotoxin. Neuro as in nerves. It causes your nerve paralysis in your nerves causes your muscles to freeze, and since your lungs and your heart work with muscles, your heart and lungs quit working, you die. But it's not the same as a, um, a rattlesnake. A rattlesnake's venom is like an acid. It dissolves the muscle tissue. So even though both bites can kill you, they're not the same. So serpents and cockatrices. So, um, verse 18, when I would comfort myself against sorrow, my heart is faint in me. Behold the, the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. Sounds like today. All right, in the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. And he's not talking about farmers, people. All right, back to uh, Jeremiah. Verse 20, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. I am black. Oh, and the black Hebrews will tell you, see, God's black. For, for the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Now, I hate to make the gospel or anything about race, but, you know, let's take a look at Strong's 
concordance on that word black. It's Kadar. Q-A-D-A-R or K-A-D-A-R to be pronounced. It's Hebrew word 6937 in the lexicon. It's a verb. A verb! The King James translates uh, this word six times as to mourn. Gee, you know, when you go to funerals, don't the women wear black to mourn? To be, uh, they, they translate it as black four times, dark four times, blackish one time, darkened one time, and heavily one time. It means to mourn, be dark, to be dark, to darken, to cause the mourn, to grow dark. Uh, let's see, to mourn in sackcloth. Hmm. Very interesting. The same word is translated uh, in the book of Psalms, chapter 38, verse 6. I am troubled. I am bowed, bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Like when you mourn the death of somebody. Psalms 42, verse 9. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? To mourn, not morning, afternoon, and night. So... Hmm. Let's read the Song of Solomon, chapter 2. I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. As the lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. The lily among thorns. One day the thorns are going to be gathered up and burned. But that's not today. As the apple tree among the trees of the wood, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under his shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. What do you, uh, you know what a banqueting house is? It's a house where you have a banquet. Think about the marriage supper of the lamb. Stay with me, flagons. Uh, flagon is a, uh, it's a large container containing wine, usually. Comfort me with apple, for I am sick of love. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand doth embrace me. I charge you, O ye daughters of Jerusalem, by the rose and by the hinds of the field, I think rose and hinds has reference to deer, that ye stir not up nor awake my love till he please. The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. My fair one? Fair. Hmm. Does that mean that you don't cheat when you're playing Monopoly? Or fair, does that mean have reference to their complexion? For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone, the flowers appear on the earth, the time of the singing of birds has come, and the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The voice of the turtle? All right, listen carefully. Here's the meat and potatoes. The fig tree, the fig tree putteth forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. O oh, my dove, 
Thou art in the clefts of the rocks, in the secret places of the stairs. Let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice, for sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. My beloved is mine, and I am his. He feedeth among the lilies until the day break, and the shadows flee away. Turn, my beloved, and be thou like a roe or a young heart upon the mountains of Bether. All right, turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah was the prophet when God decided he was going to take, carry away Jerusalem into captivity under Nebuchadnezzar to Babylon for the, as punishment for their wickedness. He says, well, you, you're not serving me. I'm going to let you serve the king of Babylon. He'll, he'll deal with you. He'll spank you. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captives and to the priests and to the prophets and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. After that, Jeconiah the king and the queen and the eunuchs and the princes of Judah and Jerusalem and the carpenters and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem by the hand of Elisha the son of Shaphan and Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon, to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Now this is what the Lord is telling them to do. Build ye houses, build ye houses, and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. So he's saying, build houses, plant gardens, eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and begat sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and not diminished. Huh. So the Lord says, be fruitful, multiply, and increase, and get more. What does Planned Parenthood say? Oh, have an abortion. You know, when, uh, well, let's take a look at something. Here you go, uh, Book of Psalms, 127, verse 1. A song of degrees for Solomon. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for he that giveth his beloved sleep. Listen carefully. Lo, Children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. So here, this is parallelism. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak. Who shall speak? The children. But they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Well, guess what, people? In America, the enemies are in the gate. They're not just in the gate. They're inside the city now. They're everywhere. But you know what? They aborted most of the children. There are no children to speak with the enemies in the gate. 
Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed. They shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Yeah, we lived, we listened to Planned Parenthood, didn't we? We sure did. Back to Jeremiah 29. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters that ye may be increased there and not diminished and seek the peace of the city. Seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof ye shall have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Yeah, don't listen to the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons and the TBN and the 700 prophets of Baal. Let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Neither hearken to their dreams, which ye cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, see, God promised that they would be in captivity for 70 years. And after that, they'd be released. And you know who released, allowed them to go back to Jerusalem? The Medes and the, the Persians. Do you know who the Persians are today? They're called Iranians. So when you hear Bibi, saying that the Persians have been trying to kill the Jews for, for forever. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take a look at something. Paul writes the following in the book of Titus, chapter 1 and verse 14. He says, Paul says, not giving heed. In other words, don't pay attention. Don't listen to. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. What's a fable? It's a lie. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Don't listen to Jewish lies. Paul wrote that 2,000 years ago almost. So when you hear Bibi say that the Persians, modern day Iranians, are trying to destroy them, they were the ones that let 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 the Jerusalem, the real Jews, the real true Judah, return from Babylon to back to Jerusalem and to rebuild the temple. He gave them back their gold for the temple um, ornaments and cups and all the stuff that they needed. Cyrus the Great, read about him. Baby's a liar. And of course, in John 8, 44, he called a certain group of them of, of their father, the devil. And if you don't know who Jesus was talking to in J John 8, 44, read down the next couple of verses. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I Think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an unexpected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken, or listen, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Hmm. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive, 
because ye have said, The Lord hath raised us up prophets in Babylon. Know that thus saith the Lord of the king that sitteth upon the throne of David, and of all the people that dwelleth in the city, and of your brethren that are not gone forth with you into captivity. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, uh, Behold, I will send upon them the sword, that's war, the famine, starvation, and the pestilence, disease, and will make them like vile figs. What is something vile? That's something disgusting or evil. Leave a leave some uh, your your dinner out in the sun uh, in the summer for a week. It'll be vile. And will make them like vile figs that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. And I will persecute them with the sword, with the famine and with the pestilence, and will deliver them to be removed of all the kingdoms of the earth to be a curse, to be a curse and an astonishment and an hissing and a reproach among the nations whither I have driven them. Do you know that word there, nations, is the same word that sometimes they translate as Gentiles? You know, when they were talking about Israel, they took the same word and translated it nations. And then other times, when they weren't sure of the context, they used Gentiles. Verse 19. Because they have not hearkened to my word, saith the Lord, which I sent unto them by my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, but ye would not hear, saith the Lord. Hear ye therefore the word of the Lord, all ye of the captivity, whom I have sent from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, of Ahab the son of Coliah, and of Zedekiah the son of Messiah, which prophesy a lie unto you in my name, behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall slay them before your eyes. Now that's, uh, you know, when a prophet of the Lord says, well, you know, these people here, they're going to be killed before your eyes. King of Babylon's going to kill them. Well, guess what? When it happens, you know, that's a true prophet. A true prophet of the Lord will always have his prophecies come true. So when the Jehovah's Witnesses said that the world would end in 75 and it didn't, and 1976 rolled around, False prophets, people. All right. And of them shall be taken up a curse by all the captivity of Judah, which are in Babylon, saying, The Lord make thee like Zedekiah and like Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted in the fire. Ew, that's not good. Because they have committed villainy in Israel. What's villainy? Well, you know what a villain is. It's a criminal, right? Because they have committed villainy in Israel and have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives and have spoken lying words in my name, lying words in my name, which I have not commanded them, even I know and am a witness, saith the Lord. Thus shalt thou also speak to Shemaiah the Neolamite, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Because thou hast sent letters in thy name unto all the people that are in Jerusalem, and to Zephaniah, the son of Maaseiah, the priest, and to all the priests, saying, The Lord hath made thee priest in the stead of Jehoiada, Jehoiada the priest, that ye should be officers in the house of the Lord. For every man that is mad and maketh himself a prophet, that thou shouldest put him in prison and in stocks. Now therefore, why hast thou not reproved Jeremiah of Anathoth, which maketh himself a prophet to you. For therefore he sent us, he sent unto us in Babylon, saying, This captivity is long, build ye houses and dwell in them, and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. And Zephaniah the priest read this letter, this letter in the ears of Jeremiah the prophet. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Send to all them of the captivity, saying, Thus saith the Lord concerning Shemaiah the Nehlamite, because that 
Shemaiah hath prophesied unto you, and I sent him not. I sent him not. And he caused you to trust in a lie. Thus, I'm sorry, therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will punish Shema, Shemaiah the Nelamite and his seed. He shall not have a man to dwell among the people, neither shall he behold the good that I will do for my people, saith the Lord, because he hath taught rebellion against the Lord. All right, so we just read in Jeremiah that uh, Judah was taken into captivity to Babylon for 70 years. Well, now we're going to read Nehemiah, who was the king of Jerusalem after the 70 years had expired and Judah returned from Babylon. So 70 years has passed since what I just read. And Nehemiah was the king. Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 1. On that day they read in the book of Moses, in the audience of the people, and therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabites should not come into the congregation of God forever. How long is forever? Uh, forever. Because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water. Now it came to pass when they had heard the law that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. And that's what Europe and the United States is today. It's a mixed multitude. And before this, Eliashib the priest, having the oversight of the chamber of the house of our God, was allied unto Tobiah. So, let's see. Well, let's keep going. All right, this is the uh, part three. It's going to be the, this is going to be the end of the Old Testament background on the grapes and the figs and the, the fruit. Next, on the next Bible study is going to be the New Testament application. Words of Christ, words of Paul. So I will, um, I'm going to close this out right now. Uh, this is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.